So welcome back guys, this is Dr. Ajinkya here and as you can see on the screen, this is the sixth case of my OPD case discussions and this patient was a middle-aged male patient uh, who had come to my OPD with complaints of right-sided recurrent nasal epistaxis, mild to moderate in amount and uh, the second complaint was the presence of a visible reddish polypoidal mass uh, on the right side nasal cavity septal area. So this patient had two main complaints. One is a visible mass and second is the recurrent epistaxis. So as you can see, there is no other main complaints of this patient. The facial features are completely normal, except for the fact that the conjunctiva of this patient is appearing a bit yellowish because of some um, changes, but it is not the typical pure white color. So the sclera is kind of yellowish and uh, nothing else so no facial puffiness nothing else so entire ENT history is negative uh, except for the fact that he had a nasal mass so uh, this case anyone at the first instance will consider it to be as a hemangioma as we discussed in my last video or case of lobular capillary hemangioma but this turned out to be a case of rhinosporidiosis. So this is a case of rhinosporidiosis. And one clinical fact about this patient is very important to understand, which will help you differentiate it from a case of hemangioma, is that this case, uh, that the lesion had a lot of yellowish white spots on the surface. So which is a indication of a multiple uh, presence of sporangia, which is typical of rhinosporidiosis. Now, rhinosporidiosis is a condition which is endemic in India, Sri Lanka, South American countries, South African regions, the South Af African regions. So this is found in people who tend to get exposed to a lot of uh, stagnant water who take a to, who take frequent baths in um, coastal areas in stagnant ponds and this happens because of a pathogen called as the rhinosporidium siberi now it's an aquatic protozoan earlier is to be considered as a fungus but not anymore also used to be considered as a cyanobacteria but not anymore today it is considered to be as a protozoan an aquatic protozoan which uh, stays in stagnant water and invades the nasal epithelium through traumatic lesions so if a patient is having a traumatic breach in the mucosa this protozoa will go in that traumatic region and infiltrate and cause a uh, infil infiltration and inflammatory reaction in response to that invasion so this results in a reddish polypoidal friable mass and within which you can see a lot of uh, sporangia now i'll show you the histopath photograph as well the complete study of this patient so this is commonly found in males uh, male to female ratio is around four is to one and it can affect uh, any age group but most common age group affected is the uh, age group of 15 to 40 years of age okay so found in sri lanka india and subcontinental coastal areas and those who frequently bathe in pond water or stagnant water they may get affected with this now the most common region of affection is the nose and nasopharynx 70 percent of patients affected in the nose and nasopharynx the rest 15 percent may be affected in the uh, conjunctiva to have an orbital rhinosporidiosis and uh, anywhere where there is mucosa uh, the rhinosporidiosis can occur. For example, lips, oral cavity, larynx, respiratory tract, uh, urethra, urinary tract, anal tract, rectum, etc. So wherever there's mucosa, it can occur there. So as a routine protocol, I did the anterior rhinoscopy. Uh, after that, I did the endoscopy. And on the endoscopy, you can see this is a typical reddish friable polypoidal mass arising from the septal region. Uh, on the medial aspect and you can see a lot of yellowish white spots on the uh, submucosal or you can say within the substance of the polyp so these represent the sporangia which i'll come i'll come in some time exactly what is sporangia so you can see presence of reddish mass with typical whitish spots over the surface in right nasal cavity so this is a hallmark identification point for rhinosporidiosis okay 
So the next product, the next thing which you do is uh, to, to get a CT scan done to be sure to know the anatomy of the patient's sinonasal tract. And we can see some haziness over the right side uh, nasal tract attached to this nasal septum. Very tiny opacified shadow over there which depicted the presence of mass. The entire rest of the uh, CT scan appeared to be normal with a bit of nasolacrimal duct opacification maybe because of the secretions present so the entire rest of the CT scan was completely normal and a bit of s-shaped mild deviation was present so nothing much more in the CT scan and we did the surgery now the basic principle rule of this surgery is that you just have to make sure that uh, now this is a benign condition right it is not malignant it does not spread like a cancer but if you do not remove the lesion, which you can see over here completely, it has a high chance of recurrence, okay? Because the causative agent, Rhinospoidium severi, will be present still and may inflict an inflammatory reaction in response to which the nasal mucosa will grow into a reddish polypoidal friable mass. So you have to make sure that you remove the entire mass from the base of it and you also take a wide excision with the margin along with it. So you have to remove the entire mass, you have to cauterize the base, and you have to remove the corresponding mucopericondrum of the nasal cartilage of the septum, as well as the mucosal flap of the nasal septum. So if at all possible, you may have to remove also the cartilage, but I think so far in any of the cases, the nasal cartilage uh, was not removed there was no need to remove that so max to max you just have to remove the nasal mucopericondrum or the nasal mucosal flap that's it and you have to take a wide excision to make sure that the surrounding margins are free of the sporangia and the polypoidal mass so after when you do the surgery uh, you send the patient or uh, you send this mass for histopathological examination for confirmation and to differential diagnosis of uh, capillary hemangioma so when we did the uh, histopathological examination you can see typical presence of a huge sporangia it's a huge sporangia as you can see on the labeling over here it is around 100 to 450 microns thick walled sporangia yellow arrow this is the yellow arrow you can see over here that's a huge spherical thing you can see over here that's called as a sporangia but it's a thick wall so the protection is also high it has a thick epithelial wall and you can see endospores which are shown by white arrow you can see numerous say around in thousands of numbers you can see a lot of small microns uh, spears over here that is uh, nothing but the endospores this is the white arrow which is, which is around 6 to 10 microns so you can imagine the entire huge sporangia is around 450 microns and each individual endospore is around 6 to 10 microns so it's going to fit maybe roughly thousands of endospores inside and you can see surrounded by a lot of blood vessels over here and a lot of eosinophilic material neutrophils and lymphocytes as well so the sporangia may be of varying different sizes because these sporangia, these are all sporangias with a lot of endospores within because they are in different stages of maturation, hence they have different sizes. So this is how you come to know that this is a proper case of rhinosporidiosis and we have got one more photograph of this case which is a normal h &E stain with a 40 times power magnification and if I zoom this to you you can actually see a lot of cases, a lot of infil infiltration, eosinophilic matter, neutrophil, lymphocytes, blood vessels, and in between the polypoidal tissue, you can see a lot of sporangia with a lot of endospores in between over here. So this is proper confirmation that this is a case of rhinosporidiosis. The name itself suggests rhino means nose and sporidiosis means a lot of sporangia with a lot of thousands of spores within itself. So this is how the only treatment is uh, surgical excision. If there is presence of, now as you can see in this patient, it was only a single mass over here. Uh, as you can see, only a single mass, but in sometimes patients may have bilateral masses with more than one mass 
either on the lateral wall or anywhere in the nose or nasopharynx. So in that condition, you have to remove each and every other mass with a medical therapy of Dapson. So you have to start the patient on Dapson therapy, uh, the medical and surgical therapy both. So this is how you should approach a patient having a mass looking like a strawberry uh, for a patient and not to consider that as hemangioma because histopathological diagnosis in this case along with the clinical appearance of this being like a strawberry is very very important so i hope you like this video and if you have any any doubts of this particular case and patient you have to let me know and you can comment in the section below or you can reach out to me on my facebook and my instagram page so till then i'll come to you next time with the opd case discussion number seven which is a case of rhinoscleroma. So, and after that, I'll be coming with a case of a frontal osteoma and a maxillary, uh, uh, you can say, a maxillary uh, cyst, which is having a connection to the uh, tooth. So it's a maxillary cyst and also many more cases like that. So stay tuned and keep watching the videos and do share your views about it. So thank you so much, guys. Till then, take care.